hello everybody we will continue our lecture in the optimal control course and then uh, this particular lecture will talk about uh, linear quadratic regulator and then subsequent 2 3 lectures also will keep on talking about this there are several reasons for that uh, and as you see in the previous couple of lectures these are computationally complex problems in general uh, any optimal control formulation leads to these two point boundary value problems and all that so th that requires a lot of numerical intensive procedures and all so then the then the early 50s and 60s people started thinking that is there any class of problems for which we don't really need all those kind of uh, numerical techniques and we can get uh, solutions in in rather computationally efficient way even though it is limited to a class of problems actually so that leads to this uh, this definition of linear quadratic regulator problems and extensively studied and extensively utilized as well it's one of the very popular tricks tricks of optimal control or class of optimal control problem that is found in usage in industry as well actually so we'll see that and then proceed uh, further some some of these extensions proofs and things like that uh, in the subsequent lectures actually so let us see understand what is this uh, lqr problem and then uh, furthermore will be subsequent lectures anyway so generic optimal control problem as i discussed many times before uh, this is what it is j j takes the form of some phi uh, this is terminal penalty plus some path penalty sort of thing and then uh, along with that there is a path constraint uh, which is a system dynamic equation as well as boundary conditions actually okay. and we will consider typically this uh, x t f is free x of t f but some problems it can be hard constraint also basically okay. all right anyway so this but this particular uh, l q r problem does not talk about a generic formulation anymore thus it talks about a specific form of cost function and a specific form of system dynamics okay. So, the this problem can be defined this way the objective is to drive the state of a linear or many times a linear is nothing but a linearized system anyway we know that. So, the, the objective is to drive the state uh, x of a linear system okay, given by this equation to the origin that means uh, x of t f has to be 0 0. Okay. By, so, how do you do that it can be done by minimizing the, the following quadratic performance index actually. Okay. So, this is the pen, this is the term, terminal penalty x f transpose s f x f okay, and this is the path penalty okay, where we want to maintain the state deviation small as small as possible throughout and we want to maintain the control as well the we want to use less, as, as much less control as possible and in general this x and del, uh, x and u are nothing but delta x and delta u remember that when, you, when we talk about linear system x is not really the true state it is a deviation state and u is not really the true control either it is actually the deviation control okay so what we want to minimize is deviation of the state should remain uh, close to zero and uh, and deviation of control should also remain close to zero that is the whole problem actually okay there are certain necessities as well and this has to be ultimately a meaningful performance index to be minimized so, so for that we need this S f and q these two matrices has to be positive semi definite and uh, this r matrix has to be positive definite okay. and not only that uh, there are uh, I mean there are some one or two other conditions as well we will talk in a, in a couple of minutes later. So, just remember that S f and q are positive semi definite and r has to be positive definite ok. So, the so that uh, I mean how do you select this uh, this matrices now actually ok. The question is okay. We are talking about selection of a matrix because these are the tuning parameters for the LQR. I mean, design approach. So, how do you select this these matrices? And one of the one of the ways to select is just to select these as diagonal matrices, and that is what most of the time the, it is used that way. Okay. So, and once you select the, the any any matrix as as diagonal matrix, uh, the diagonal elements are nothing but positive. I mean, eigenvalues. So, if you just put positive elements in the diagonal matrices it will give you positive definite matrix actually. Okay. So, that is the trick that people play and that to put select diagonal matrices with positive entries actually. Now, even in positive entries how will you select the entries itself actually. Okay. So, that is what I am talking this uh, for example, q uh, whatever q you are talking here okay. q is nothing but uh, something like uh, a diagonal matrix with q, with q i okay. uh, everything else is 0. Now, how will you select this q i? Okay. So, the the guideline here okay, is, is recommended guideline turns out that okay, you expect a maximum deviation okay, maximum uh, or expected or acceptable value of this this value actually okay, 1 by x i square. 
q y is equal to maximum expected value of 1 by x i square ok or similarly r i is maximum expected value or maximum acceptable value of 1 by u square. In other words, if you do that remember these functions are nothing but u 1 square r 1 times u 1 square r 1 plus u 2 times r 2 like that actually. So, what it happens here is some sort of a normalization actually ok. So, you are talking about something like u 1 square divided by u 1 max square plus u 2 square ok this, this expression what you are looking at this particular thing in that selection what I just talked of this will turn out to be something like u 1 square divided by u 1 max square ok plus u 2 square divided by u 2 max square like that ok. So, that means that this is some sort of a normalization actually. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you are talking about doing same same similar operation here a similar operation here as well actually ok. So, that is uh, what I wanted to tell actually by doing this. There are some other I mean some other facts to remember as I told you that uh, this pair A V obviously needs to be controllable. The very very idea of controllability is always there and if the pair A V is not controllable the L Q R control cannot be done. In fact, any other control cannot be done either actually ok. So, the very fundamental requirement is A V needs to be controllable and also it turns out that A and square root of Q also needs to be detectable ok. So, these are all uh, theoretical requirements some of you want to know, know you can pick up a LQR related book linear quadratic books are available Anderson is Anderson and Moore is probably one of the standard books people follow actually and see some of the proofs re reasons for that and things like that that way. Anyway, so this uh, pair A B needs to be controllable and the pair A and square root of Q needs to be detectable. Okay. And remember uh, as long as a matrix is positive semi definite you can talk about square root of q okay, this is computable actually ok. Alright, so this this is the first thing and this we already talked and by default it is assumed that E f tends to infinity. In general it can be finite time LQR, but uh, but but if somebody does not tell you that it is a finite time LQR just simply tells ok it is LQR problem then by default it is assumed that E f goes to infinity actually ok. And also remember that constraint problems that means uh, problems with state and control inequality constraints are not considered here. We will consider them later ok, but not here right now ok. So, with these things to uh, with these things in mind we will let us proceed further actually. So, what is our performance index? This is this is going to be our performance index half of this plus integral of T naught to T f half of this quantity ok. So, essentially in our generic framework this happens to be our phi and this happens to be our L actually. So, path constraint is a linear equation x dot equal to x plus v u and boundary condition given by like this actually ok. So, what is our terminal penalty phi of x f is like this ok. What is our Hamiltonian? Hamiltonian nothing but L plus lambda transpose f and remember this is this is our f ok. This is our f of x u ok not small u here. ok big u ok. Well, in our notation small any small thing is a scalar and any big thing is a vector. So, just be careful about that you are talking about vector variables in general actually ok. So, this is our phi this is our L and this is our f and these are the conditions that are available to us actually ok. Alright, so this uh, this this is phi this is our Hamiltonian L ok L coming from here ok plus lambda transpose f f is this ok x plus p u. So, this is what it is once you know Hamiltonian and a phi our necessary conditions are all there with us the state equation is already there x dot equal to x plus p u lambda dot equal to minus del h by del x. So, it is happen to be minus of q x plus a transpose lambda ok. An optimal control equation is del s by del e equal to 0. So, that means u equal to minus r inverse v transpose lambda ok because you can uh, you can see this ok from here let me do this ok. Anyways, let me so let me quickly do this Hamiltonian is nothing but ok uh, well you we can do this. Ok. 
Okay. All right. So Hamiltonian is nothing but okay our uh, uh, half of x transpose q x plus u transpose r u l plus lambda transpose f f is nothing but a x plus b u. Okay. Again, this problem. Okay. Okay. So this uh, cost function. Uh, sorry, this uh, costed equation lambda dot equal to minus del s by del x. So if you have this this h coming here, this is minus of del s by del x. One term comes from here, which is q x. Okay, and the other term comes from here. Okay, this is uh, lambda transpose a x. Okay, so this lambda transpose a x. Okay, that I can talk about to derivative a transpose lambda basically. Okay, and similarly if I talk del h by del u. Okay, del h by del u is nothing but one term comes from this half u transpose r u, so that is r u plus the other term is lambda transpose b u. So that means if I take derivative, it becomes b transpose lambda. Okay. So then this has to be equal to zero. That means you can solve u equal to minus r inverse b transpose lambda. Okay. So that is how it comes this optimal control equation, and this is how your costed equation comes actually. Okay. All right. So this is what uh, what has been. Uh, done here, okay. All right. So x dot equal to x plus bu, lambda dot equal to minus q x plus a transpose lambda, and this equation del s by del e equal to zero gives us this u equal to minus r inverse b transpose lambda. Actually, the boundary condition. This is remember this is our terminal penalty. Del phi by del del phi by del x f will turn out to be s f into x f. Okay. So this is how it is. So all these conditions, starting from here, this this condition needs to be satisfied for our control solution. Actually, okay. Now here is the trick in this uh, this particular problem. This uh, lambda of t is guessed as some time varying matrix P of t into x of t. Okay, and there is there are justifications for that. Actually, okay, one intuitive engineering justification comes from here that uh, lambda f is nothing but Sf Xf. That means lambda f is a linear function of Xf. So if at final time Tf lambda f is a linear function of Xf, then how about guessing that every point of time it is also a linear function of X? And the motivation comes from there. Then also if you think a little bit, and then this LQR problem has a unique solution. And so if you are able to assume something like this, lambda of t equal to Pt times Xt, and finally get a solution, then that has to be the only solution. Because because it has it has uniqueness property actually. Okay, but even going a little more further, it is it has been formally proven from function analysis theory, okay, of non-linear space and all that that lambda of t acts in the dual space of X actually. Okay, and hence it has to be a linear functional of that. Okay. So we don't talk about too much on that, but somebody is interested, he can always see this classic book, a very good book actually. Optimization by vector space methods. If you see that, that the, some of these are, uh, I mean, proofs and all that will be available. But uh, very engineering, intuitive sense. It, it is. It happens at the final time, so we can assume that it uh, it can happen in the at every point of time from T naught to T F. And because L Q R admits an uniqueness of the theorem, okay, so if a, if at all we are getting a solution, that has to be the only solution actually. Okay. The solution form can differ. I mean, you can somebody can write in a different. Uh, Symbolic sense and uh, different math sense and all that. So it is something like sine theta equal to cos cosine of pi by 2 minus theta. So it both are similar basically. Okay. You can the expression seems to be, appears to be different, but ultimately they are same actually. Anyway, so the, this is uh, this is what it is. So with that justification, lambda is assumed to be some time varying matrix P times uh, x of t actually. Okay. So this is what it is. Then, with the with respect to that selection, let us analyze or let us try to use all these equations that we have actually. So now lambda of t is p t p t x t. So what is lambda dot? Lambda dot is p dot times x plus p times x dot. And again, I emphasize: do not exchange this uh, this uh, I mean multiplication sequence. Sequence is important here actually. So lambda dot is p dot times x plus p times x dot. Okay. So let us keep this p dot times x. Don't change it. Okay, just keep it like that. But x dot, we know that it is nothing but state equation. So we put a x plus b u. That's the state equation. U, we just derived that u is nothing but r inverse b transpose lambda. So we'll put that that here, r inverse b transpose lambda. Okay. 
and then we lambda again we know it is nothing but p times x. So, we will put p times x here. Okay. Now, what is lambda of t? Okay. What is lambda, lambda dot of t? Lambda dot of t is nothing but this coastal equation minus q x term minus q x plus a transpose lambda. So, we will put that minus q x plus a transpose lambda and lambda is again p times x that is put here actually. So, this side of the story is coastal equation here we use state equation and here is optimal control equation actually. Okay. So, state equation getting used here, okay. co-state equation getting used here, okay, this side of the story and then optimal control equation is used here actually. So, all the three equations are embedded here actually. Okay. Now, once you have it something like that, it is all in the in the, some equation like this, you can take uh, everything into the left hand side and make it something at a big matrix at times uh, x equal to 0 and remember x is not necessarily equal to 0 basically. Okay, x is x is a trajectory which evolves with time and x in general is not uh, not 0, but this equation has to be true. So, in that sense and it has to be true for all possible values of x that is uh, that is also a requirement actually. Okay. If it is valid for all possible values of x then the coefficient has to go to 0 and then th that is how we will get it the Ricard equation actually. Okay, this is famously called a Ricard equation. Uh, Italian mathematician who kind of developed this I mean came across this equation in a scalar variable sense for the first time actually. Okay. So, that is how it is uh, renamed as a Ricard equation actually. Anyway, so this is uh, popularly known as the differential Ricard equation and if you remember this is, is a p dot here. Okay. So, obviously, we need a boundary condition for p also and this boundary condition is uh, is obtained like this because we know lambda f equal to s f x f right. This is lambda f okay, is nothing but s f x f, but what is lambda f? Lambda f is nothing but p of t f into x of t f from here. So, you put that p of t f into x of t f or x f equal to s f x f. So, again x f is free, x f is not 0. So, hence these two is to be equal actually. So, we get a differential equation okay, matrix differential equation with a corresponding boundary condition at T f actually. Okay. So, now what is the beauty here? This problem if you just see this equation and this boundary condition they are independent of the problem definition. Okay. So, we do not really bother about which initial condition the problem operates and things like that. We simply start with this boundary condition and integrate this differential equation backward and store this values of P of T from T naught to T f and then start using I mean whenever the operation time starts at T naught. So, we have available solution ready of because the P of T and X of T are available okay, your lambda is available and hence lambda once lambda is available your control is also available. Okay. So, that is how the things proceed actually. Okay, so, this is what is written here you use the boundary condition okay, and integrate the Ricard equation backward from T f to T naught store the solution history of the Riccardi matrix from T naught to T f and compute the optimal control online actually. Okay, when, when online you have to compute it, compute, compute it e equal to minus r inverse b transpose lambda, lambda is nothing but p times x. So, this part of the thing you can think about something like a gain matrix, okay, you can then you can write e equal to minus k times x actually. Okay. So, that is how it is computed. Now, the question is do we really need to do this because this is a differential matrix equation and all that. So, it may not be very good to do that always. So, is there a simplified way of doing that? You do not have to keep on uh, integrating, storing and things like that actually. Now, it turns out that uh, this great theorem by Kalman again uh, has, has simplified the life quite a lot and that is uh, what is shown that when T f goes to infinity and you have selected uh, if somebody selects a constant q and r matrix, okay, they are not time varying matrices, then p dot goes to 0 for all time from beginning to end actually. Okay. That means, from p, p dot remains 0 throughout actually, it does not change essentially the p turns out to be a constant matrix actually. Okay. If p is a constant matrix, then p dot is 0 and if p dot is 0, suddenly this differential equation turns out to be a algebraic equation actually. And that is what is very popular in industry and everywhere actually. So, that is the reason why if nobody tells T f then we by default we assume T f tends to infinity actually. So, we can keep on using this as long as we wish. Anyway, so to when T f goes to infinity okay, p dot goes to 0 and hence this differential record equation turns out to be an algebraic record equation actually. Yeah. But remember that ARE or algebraic record equation is still a nonlinear equation for the Riccardi matrix. Okay. 
and hence it is not very straightforward to solve. It is not like a, by the way, there is a, somebody a little bit clever can see that if this nonlinear term is not there, this P A B R inverse V transpose P that is not there, then this is nothing but a Lyapunov equation, a linear equation actually. Okay. So, that can be solved extremely easily, but in general here okay, this is a nonlinear equation okay, and it is it is not that straightforward actually. So, but what happened is because this equation is so, uh, I mean, it keeps on appearing in, in a number of problems throughout uh, the across the field. People have done lot of research on that. How to how to come up with efficient numerical methods actually. Okay, so it is all available now, and some of these has also gone into some routines of uh, this control systems toolbox in MATLAB actually. So. If you just use ARE, that's algebraic Ricard equation. There is a command called ARE. There, is, there are commands for LQR also. LQR, LQR2, then discrete LQR, DLQR. ARE is available for algebraic Ricard equation. Okay. So things like that. There are a bunch of functions available in MATLAB also actually. Okay. So you know, so ARE is still a nonlinear equation for for Ricard matrix. Hence, it, but the question, I mean, the problem point here is, it has uh, drawn quite a bit of attention. And hence, uh, good solution techniques are available for this actually. Okay. But also remember that a positive definite solution for Riccardi matrix is needed to obtain a stabilizing controller. Okay. So we can you can prove that also. Okay, that uh, with a positive definite P, lot of good things do happen actually. Because remember why? Because this is a nonlinear equation; it can admit multiple solution actually. So you have to discard all other solution and take one solution which is positive definite actually. Then you get lot of good things there actually. Before going to further things, which we'll do it in next class anyway. I thought in this class we'll see some example problem, which will clarify our ideas uh, in a good way actually. So the first problem that I uh, really want people, all of you, to kind of put your hands on, is a very standard classical benchmark problem of stabilization of inverted pendulum. Okay. An inverted pendulum are uh, uh, I mean very intuitive. Uh, these problems, there are a variety of inverted pendulum problems available. And uh, this problem, what you are talking here, is there is an inverted pendulum on a cart actually. Okay, there is a cart and there is an inverted pendulum. And one way to stabilize that is to move the cart. Okay, but one way to stabilize them is also to apply a torque around that. Okay, so by moving the cart here and there, you are also indirectly applying a torque actually. But in general, you can also directly mechanize some sort of a motor or something like that, uh, where this torque can be generated actually. Okay. So the system dynamics, uh, okay, uh, this inverted pendulum has also drawn a little more interest uh, in aerospace community because uh, when the launch vehicle is uh, launched vertically, okay, and that point of time, it happens to be a kind of an inverted pendulum actually. Okay, it's not that uh, the string has zero mass; the entire length will have distributed mass and all that actually. That's a different issue. But well, ultimately, the payload will be there at the top, okay, and the instrumentation and, and fuel pump, uh, sorry, fuel tank and everything will be towards the, I mean, towards towards the top actually. So hence, you'll you'll will consider that as some sort of an inverted pendulum actually. Okay. So the, anyway, so these are some of the motivations why this uh, inverted pendulum is problem is studied a little bit in depth actually. All right. So the system dynamics, uh, I mean, you can derive it using this. Uh, Newton's law of motion and all that, but to, after you do all that, uh, the dynamics turns out to be something like this in a linearized form. Okay. So, in a linearized form, if you take theta, the deflection uh, from vertical axis is what you want to minimize anyway. So, if you if you do this uh, moment uh, equation and all that, uh, then it turns out the theta double dot is nothing but g by g over l into theta. Okay plus u or minus u. I mean, if u is in the opposite direction, then it is minus u actually. Okay. So, that is u is the control variable and the theta is the state equation. I mean, this is the system dynamics. So, theta and theta dot happens to be the state variable actually. So, we write it that way. The state space form, first we write it uh, this dynamics into in, in state space form, where you define x 1 is theta and x 2 is theta dot. Okay. So, we put that in x 1 dot and x 2 dot and then remember this dynamics has to be written. So, it turns it takes this form actually x 1 dot which is x 2. Okay. So, x 1 dot is 0 times x 1 plus x 2 plus 0 times u. Okay. So, x 1 dot is x 2 whereas x 2 dot is theta double dot which is nothing but that. So, 
x2 dot is omega n square into x1 coming from here plus 0 times x2 but minus 1 times u basically. Okay. That is how you get this a b matrices and all and this have to be constant matrices if they are constant matrices actually. Okay. Now, what is our objective? Our objective is to minimize the performance index like this. Why? Because we want to minimize theta. Okay, it has to it has to remain vertical. So we want to minimize the theta deviation. Okay, with minimum application of control as well. Actually, okay. And in this particular problem, we write it this way. So this r equal to one over c square, and q happens to be one here because the theta is the x one. So the one here and zero everywhere else. Actually. Okay, and somebody can also think about minimizing theta dot as well. Okay, but there are problems. There are good things and bad things about that. Theta dot minimization means you all you can also introduce a penalty for theta dot here. That means some something will appear in this diagonal also element as well. Good thing about that is once it reaches the vertical point, that's a good thing to have because you don't want theta dot to develop further. But if you minimize theta dot on the way, okay, then your response will be sluggish actually. Your response will not be fast. Okay. So if somebody is little bit clever, they can uh, initially operate with this cost function, and once it is a very small narrow boundary, then you can switch over to the other cost function and try to apply in the other controller actually. Okay, that's a possibility. Okay. But here we are not talking about that. It's a just a demonstrative problem anyway, basically. Okay. So q happens to be like this, and r happens to be like this, one over c square. And then let us see whether we can really apply our our knowledge and then get some solution out of this actually. Okay. So here is a t goes to infinity. So this is t f is infinity. So we have this uh, algebraic Riccardi equation. That's what we have to bother about. So we'll uh, put that. And this is one equation. I'll also recommend people taking this course uh, should should remember actually. But once you remember Riccardi equation, you are remembering two equations simultaneously. You are remembering Riccardi equation anyway, but you are also remembering Lyapunov equation. You take out this term and it is nothing but Lyapunov equation actually. And these two equations are very, very heavily appearing in many of our fields. So, I thought it is good to remember this equation actually. So, this is, uh, this is our uh, algebraic Riccardi equation. P A plus A transpose P minus P B R inverse B transpose B plus K equal to zero. So now we are interested in solving for P, okay? And we want that kind of solution which should have symmetricity as well as positive definiteness, okay? So let us start with that. So we start with the symmetric matrix P two P two, okay? And uh, this P one so that is P one P two and P two P two here, and then we put it back here. Okay, so p times a. This is p, and that is a. Uh, sorry, this is a. So if you multiply this p with with that a, okay, we'll end up with this kind of thing, matrix. Plus a transpose p. So you'll have this at a, okay, a times okay, transpose times p. And remember, p is a symmetric matrix. So we, this this happens to be just the transpose of this this matrix. What you get here. Is nothing but the transpose of that, so you don't have to really compute that. Basically, okay. if you compute this, then immediately you can write this actually. Okay. Minus P B inverse, uh, sorry P B R inverse B transpose P, and you can compute all that and then come up with that actually. Okay. P is given as uh, this way. Okay. B is given as something like this, zero minus one. Okay. P B R R is given as something like this, one over C square. Okay, so R inverse is just C square, and then B transpose and P are all available actually. So you compute this this uh, matrix multiplication terms turns out to be like that actually. Okay. Plus Q and Q is like this. Okay. That is equal to zero. Okay. So this equation turns out to be like that. And if you see now component by component, okay, here uh, uh, just a comment. There here if somebody wants, they can simply use uh, I mean, take a value of numerical values of omega n square and all that, and simply use this uh, MATLAB toolbox. Once you select a value for omega n square and c square, you can use this LQR solution and get a solution. That's not a point. But the point here is, can you are you can you able to? I mean, are you able to solve it using closed form solutions actually? Okay. Uh, 
I mean symbolic solution that is what you are attempting for actually here. Okay. So, once you write this equation, okay, you write it in component by component. So, the first one one element will give us all that, okay, that equation, one two element will give us that way and one three will give us that actually. Uh, sorry, uh, 1 1, 1 2 and 2 2 that is all we need actually because one other one will be repeated actually. The what you get from uh, 1 2 will be same as what you get from 2 1 actually. Okay. So, that is repeated equation you can ignore that because we have already selected this P 2 P 2 here remember that. So, we have only 3 three free variables. So, we need 3 three equations only. So, even if one equation is repeated we are not bothered about that actually. So, using these three equation you have to solve for p 1, p 2, p 3 and remember these equations are nonlinear in general. So, it can have uh, multiple solutions and all that. Okay. So, if you use this this thing remember this is a quadratic uh, equation in p 2. So, we know the solution for that p 2 equal to 1 over c square this this form actually okay. and uh, p 1 can be computed there uh, once you know p 2 and p 3 p 1 is a direct function anyway. Okay. And this equation if you use the third equation you will get p 3 is nothing but plus or minus 1, 1 by c square root of 2 p 2 from here. Right. So, what it what it happens p 3 needs to be positive. So, now there is a ambiguity here okay. and remember p 3 is a diagonal element. So, we are better off by selecting this uh, this positive element actually. I mean this uh, P 3 okay, where you talk about uh, something like a plus or minus term. So, we will select P 3 as positive term actually. Okay. Once you take P 3 as positive term okay, then P 2 okay, uh, P 2 it needs to be positive either actually. Okay because p 3 is square root of 2 p 2. So, unless p 2 is positive we will end up with some sort of a imaginary number and all that actually. Okay. So, we want real values at, at p 3 okay, here okay. and if it is real values then better that this has to be square root of p 2 and p 2 needs to be positive also basically. Okay. So, if p 2 is positive then remember this term what you are getting is more than that. Okay. So, we are better off by selecting the positive value not the, not the negative sign here negative will be lesser than that basically because uh, this is nothing this omega n square fourth plus e square square root okay this is going to magnitude wise it is going to be greater than omega n square so if you select a negative quantity here then then p2 will turn out to be negative number and things like that once p2 is negative p3 will turn out to be imaginary quantity so that kind of things we will try to avoid actually so we'll take p2 as some positive number and then here also we'll select a positive number actually Okay, so, this is what it will happen to actually. So, this is how we will eliminate that and P 1 as I told you can solve it, okay, but it turns out that P 1 is essentially not needed because your gain matrix turns out to be a function of P 2 P 3 only. Control gain, gain matrix is R inverse V transpose P, once you compute that, that turns out to be like this. So, this uh, P 1 is essentially not needed, but it is needed for, uh, for only cross checking purpose or some getting a feeling for what is P 1 and all that actually. Anyway, so the control matrix can be computed that way, where P2 is given something like this and P3 is given something like this. Okay. So the control is ultimately given in the form of minus kx. So minus kx means this way. And also notice that even though we did not take this uh, this theta dot penalty here, that doesn't mean we don't need theta dot feedback. Theta dot feedback is here is, is necessary because it's a state feedback control solution anyway. Okay. So, the the way to go ahead and do that is uh, I mean to, to implement it is we need both theta and theta dot information for the controller. Okay. All right. So, what is the what is the good thing about that we have done some selection and all that. So, the final thing final question is have you made an unstable system stable actually that is the that is the question there. The inverted pendulum by default is unstable anyway analysis will also show that is unstable actually okay. we will see that. So, open loop system if you if you talk about an open loop uh, uh, Eisen value then your A matrix is only thing. So, if you take this A matrix and come try to compute the Eisen values okay, 
lambda i minus a which turns out to be like this is nothing but omega s, um, lambda square minus omega n square equal to 0. So, that means lambda is nothing but plus or minus omega n. So, obviously, one root is there on the right half floor and hence the system is unstable and we know it very well that inverted pendulum is unstable in any case basically. So, mathematically it confirms to that, but that is not the point, but this is open loop system anyway. The whole idea is after putting the feedback, uh, after applying the control is the system stable. That means, we are talking about a closed loop system dynamics actually and closed loop system dynamics is, is uh, very easy to see. Okay, this Okay, so closed loop system dynamics. Once you have this uh, this x dot, okay, is equal to a x plus b u. B u and u equal to minus k x. So if you put that together, then x dot happens to be a x minus b k x. So it is nothing but a minus b k into x. So this is what we are talking about as closed loop matrix actually. Okay, all the time in linear systems. Okay, so this is what you are doing here actually. A minus b k. So a minus b k because now k is available. So we put that a, a is there, b is there, k is available. So put it back, and this turns out to be like that. And for further simplicity, we can something like define omega square is something like this. Okay, so p two and p three you can write in a simplified sense basically. Okay and closed loop poles will be given by this Eigen value equation anyway. So, you try to expand that equation now and it turns out to be something like this lambda square plus this quadratic function I mean this is a quadratic equation in terms of lambda and this solution turns out to be like this. Okay. So, what happens here the, the real part is, is negative actually okay. that means both the roots okay, has been shifted to the negative side actually. Okay, that means, if, okay, if you really want to see in a picture sense, then initially the open loop poles were something like this okay. and what we have done by doing this is, uh, okay. so we have shifted the poles somewhere here actually. Open loop poles were somewhere, I mean, okay. uh, this is your sigma, okay, sigma and j omega axis. So, Initially, the poles were somewhere like this, and one was unstable, okay. and then these two poles got shifted to this, which both are stable actually, both are in the left hand side. Okay. So, so what you are telling here is, since the closed loop system is guaranteed to be asymptotically stable, that is the message actually. Okay. All right. So, before stopping this lecture, we will uh, talk about another example, which is uh, again a very interesting example actually. Okay. And you talk about finite time uh, problem now, and finite time this that is an infinite time problem actually. Now, we talk about finite time problem, and finite time, time uh, problem this is a very standard problem, a temperature control problem in a room, let us say. Okay. Now, the system dynamics turns out to be something like that theta dot is minus of a into theta minus theta a plus b u, where theta is the ambient temperature, whereas theta is the, the actual temperature basically. Okay. And the way to control temperature is by heat input. I mean, so we are assuming here that either heat can be given or it can be taken out, either way actually. Okay. So, if the temperature is uh, lesser than what you desire, then you have to pump in some heat. So, you have to give some heat input. Okay. If the temperature is already over, I mean, you want to reduce the temperature, then you have to pump out some heat actually. Okay. You take out some heat actually that way. There are two ways of formulating this problem, and we'll see the two ways of both the both the ways of doing this actually. So the oh, sorry, okay, okay. First first problem is uh, case one. Okay, we'll not we'll we'll talk about something like a hard constraint where theta f final final value of theta the temperature has to be equal to thirty degree. Okay. And this case two, we'll talk about a soft constraint, okay, where uh, the final penalty is not there here, but a hard constraint is in place. But here, the final control, final constraint is not there, but a soft constraint is in place. Right? Theta f has to be as close to thirty as possible. That's what we are comfortable with. And then we'll put this this cost function actually. Okay. So these two problems, system dynamics is same. Objective is nearly same. One we talk about exactly thirty degree, and the other one is approximately 30 degree 
and as SF goes to infinity, these two problems are same actually. It has to be same. Okay, when SF SF goes to infinity, okay, then theta f has to be equal to thirty degree. Okay, that's the requirement actually. Okay. So one is done in a hard constraint way, the other one is done in a soft constraint way actually. So let us see for the solution. So for to, for our simplicity, we'll define this something like this: theta x equal to theta minus theta a, and theta zero happens to be theta a, right? So that's our initial condition, the ambient temperature actually, right? Initially, the temperature is at ambient temperature. So what is our x zero? X zero is nothing but theta of zero minus theta a. Okay, theta of zero is theta a anyway. That turns out to be theta minus theta a equal to zero. So initial condition in, in state variable x is nothing but zero basically. Okay, and what is the system dynamics? System dynamics is like this, and theta a is a constant value. Remember that. So theta a dot is zero. So if I do theta a dot minus here is okay. So I am talking about x dot equal to minus a times x plus v u. Okay, this is what it is. X dot equal minus x plus v u actually. Okay. Now Hamiltonian is nothing but uh, I mean case one. What we are talking here L plus lambda transpose f. And L plus lambda transpose f is is common to both anyway. Only phi is different. This is this is this phi and that phi is zero and all that actually. Okay. Anyway, so coming back, uh, this is your uh, Hamiltonian, which is half of u square coming from this term, plus lambda times f. F is nothing but minus x plus v u basically. Okay, so that that is coming from this uh, this state equation here. Okay, this is our Hamiltonian. So what is our lambda dot? Lambda dot is minus del h by del x. And if you do this del h by del x from this expression, it turns out to be this one, right? Only this term will contribute, contribute actually. Okay. So del h by del x is nothing but minus uh, a lambda, and uh, minus of that is again plus a lambda. So lambda is lambda dot is a times x. And here you can also, uh, when very interestingly, you can see that. Let us assume that a is positive. Then what happens? And uh, homogeneous system u is not there. Okay, u is zero. Then x dot on one side you have this. Uh, Sorry. Okay. One side you have this x dot equal to a x. Okay. And the other side you have lambda dot equal to minus. Uh, sorry, x dot equal to minus a x and lambda dot equal to a x a, a lambda. Basically, right. So what you are looking here is if a is a positive number, then x is uh, my state equation is positive. I mean stable. Okay. If if x is a positive number. Okay. Then, then x dot equal to minus x. That means this equation is a stable equation, whereas this equation lambda dot is a lambda, a is a positive number, and hence this is an unstable equation. Actually. Okay. So see that now these kinds of things are available anyway. All right. So this is what it is. But anyway, coming back, coming back. This is our state equation. This is our co-state equation, and this happens to be our control equation. Okay, u equal to minus lambda. So as long as we know minus lambda times b, so the b is known to us. So as long as we know lambda, we are done actually. Okay. So necessary conditions to summarize happens to be like this: x dot equal to minus x plus b u, lambda dot is a lambda, and u equal to minus v lambda. So the solution of the the first case, okay, a hard constraint case, we can proceed this way. This equation happened to be kind of a independent equation here, which is a lot of uh, good thing because you can do closed form solutions easily now. Okay. So lambda dot is a lambda. So with respect to lambda f, because lambda f is something that is known to us typically. So with respect to lambda f, the solution happens to be like that: e to the power a t minus t f into lambda f. Which is equal to e to the power. Just to just to put minus sign here, T F minus T. Typically, in all our missile guidance problem and all, this this function appears heavily. T F minus T, which is nothing but T go basically, time to go basically. How much more time is available for our control application? So that is the con con concept of time to go basically. Okay, so this lambda is nothing but e to the power minus a times T F minus T into lambda F. Okay. And hence, my if I know my know my lambda, okay, my control is uh, now known minus b times lambda. So minus b times lambda, lambda is there. But remember, lambda f is still not known actually. 
okay, so that you have to compute. Okay. Anyway, B is available, lambda is available. So what is my x dot now? X dot is minus a x plus b times u, and u is available now. Okay. So this expression is available. So I put it back here. Okay. Now this equation is uh, nothing but a linear time invariant system with a forcing function actually. Okay. So I can try to solve it, and one way to solve that is using this Laplace transform way of solving and all that. So you can take a Laplace transform of this equation, both sides. And one side it will be s times x of s minus x of zero in time thing, and x of zero is nothing but zero. Okay. So we put that zero, and right hand side is minus a times that minus b square lambda f, and this kind of thing, whatever this Laplace transform of this function actually turns out to be like that. Okay. So you solve it. I mean, take this s, s minus a. I mean, these these two terms take it to one side, so this will turn out to be s plus a into x of s. Okay. And hence, you can solve it using this inverse Laplace transform ideas and all that. So x of s turns out to be okay if you if you take it and divide it by s plus a everywhere and all that. So this is s minus a into s plus a. S plus a will come from this term and that term one side, and then divide it by that. So we'll have s s minus a into s plus a. So that is s square minus a square sort of thing. So you'll have this uh, this term. We you can I, again I suggest all of you to. To carry out this algebra yourself in pen and paper, actually. Okay. So x of s is nothing but this one, okay. And then this expression can be done in partial fraction way. You can, if you want to solve it, it's very easy rather. So this partial fraction happens to be like this, okay. and hence you can take the inverse transform and get it that way. Okay. Now you will be able to see, you will be able to your final hard constraint, and hard constraint happens to be this guy, right? Okay, this hard constant uh, in the in the state space form, I mean whatever state we have defined, theta minus theta a, turns out to be ten actually. Okay, so x of t f because x of f is now available in the closed form way, but lambda f is unknown. Remember that. So that you have to we have to solve. We will be able to solve it using this boundary condition anyway. So at this at this using this expression, put t equal to t f, and uh, t f when you put t equal to t f, x of t f is nothing but ten degrees. So you put 10, and then you solve it from solve solve for lambda f from this equation. So 10 equal to all that, and hence lambda f is turns out to be like that. So x of t happens to be like this actually. Okay. So we are able to actually solve a, a hard constraint problem. Okay, using this some of these simplistic ideas, and primarily the key point here to note is this lambda equation turns out to be independent equation. Okay, it doesn't is not coupled with x and all that. So that that made our life simpler actually. But the point here is okay. Using this expression, if I put x of t f, okay, that you can very clearly note that x of t f if I put it is nothing but e to the power t f. Uh, the this numerator and denominator has the same term. This will cancel out, and you will get exactly ten. Okay, that means the boundary condition is exactly met actually. Okay. What's the controller? Controller expression we already have. Okay, this is our controller and all. Now lambda f is an expression available, right? Lambda f we have solved for lambda f. So putting that, we will get a controller expression actually. So this controller, if you use for about uh, whatever, uh, I mean, T F is given, right? Okay, for T equal to T F, T zero to T F, if we apply, okay, T T equal to zero to T F, if we apply that, okay, exactly we will be able to get it actually. Okay. And remember, this uh, this is a symbolic solution, so T F is still a variable. Okay, but you can uh, you can uh, use various values of T F and see this this see this one actually. No matter what T F value you take, it will be exactly satisfied actually at that point of T F. Now, what about the case two, which is soft constraint that we are not bothered about that uh, that kind of control actually. Okay, but uh, we are not. Uh, Okay, so what uh, I mean, there is there is a little bit of drawback here. Okay, if you use this, uh, I mean, typically with the hard constraints will have they will have that drawback anyway. This is uh, not um, I mean, this particular problem it is still okay, but then in general, the if you have a hard constraint problem, the control requirement at the end turns out to be infinity, which is not possible to meet actually. There is a control singularity at the end, but I mean, actually. okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, so coming back to this, so this is a soft constraint approach. Soft constraint means we are uh, interested in uh, x f going to be approximately 10 degree. Okay, 
and there is a corresponding cost function happens to be like this. Okay. So, then lambda f is nothing but del phi by del x f. So, that turns out to be something like this. So, from here you can solve for x f is something like this, okay. but x of t we have already solved uh, the, the, that part of the solution remains same actually. So, we solve it like this I mean x of t is available. Okay. Now, you can put t equal to t f and then substitute this and then you try to solve for lambda f t equal to t f x, x will become x f x f is nothing but that. So, put it there and that will become an equation in terms of lambda f actually. So, you solve for lambda f that is what you have done here actually. Okay. Solve for the put the two equations there and then solve for lambda f. So, what is happening here only the lambda f expression is different other things are other things are same. One case the lambda f is turns, turns out to be like this the other case the lambda f turns out to be okay we have just solved it here somewhere okay turns out to be like this. So, these two expressions are different actually okay. and hence the control and everything will become different actually that way okay. All right, so lambda f is is like this here, and hence lambda turns out to be like this, and hence your control is nothing but b lambda minus b lambda, and it happens to be like that. Okay, so the con two controllers will be different depending on whether you are talking about a soft constraint or hard constraint. Actually, now the question is, if S F tends to infinity, then soft constraint is nothing but hard constraint. So does it satisfy that actually? Okay, because the cost cost function, if you see, okay, if you started with that cost function, S F goes to infinity. As I told, these two problems are same. So, does it happen that way? Okay. So, uh, we can see that the in limit when you could do this limiting calculation u of t under soft constraint when s f goes to infinity happens to be like this and hence uh, you can uh, you can simplify this expression you can uh, carry out this algebra and very clearly say that some of these expressions will nullify and ultimately you will end up with same hard constraint control actually. This expression this expression simplifies because 1 by s f is 0 so this is gone. Okay. And we are left out with this uh, 2 goes to top, this, this is 20, so, and 1b will cancel out. So, you will end up with this expression, which is nothing but the expression for the hard, hard constraint control actually. So, the summary is the soft constraint problem behaves like the hard constraint problem when TSF goes to infinity. So, that is that compatibility check is also there actually. Okay. All right. So, I think uh, these two examples will give us uh, give us, uh, some ideas that how do we handle this uh, both in, in terms of Ricard equation as well as hard constraint and soft constraint sense uh, things like that actually. More much more on LQR control and extensions proofs uh, then all that uh, we will talk in subsequent lectures actually that is all I want to